This week I've been testing this 2018 Volvo V60 T6 all-wheel drive R design. 19 inch wheels, the turbocharged and supercharged four cylinder. It's that two liter with about 302 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. It has your collision avoidance system, radar guided cruise control, and lane departure warning, all good stuff. I've actually really enjoyed driving this car this week, mostly because it's a wagon. I've been hauling winter wheels and tires for uh, all the vehicles, but because it's just kind of, Volvo wagons are, they're cool. And this one is no exception. You've got quite a bit of storage in here. Nice innovative cargo solutions. It's not a power lift gate, but it's very light and easy to bring up and put down. Not a ton of room in the back seat, but you are able to fold the seats completely flat, which is nice. Once you move the headrest out of the way. Got some cup holders and storage here. It's a little bit cramped back here. There's not a ton of legroom, but it is what it is. Nice looking R Design steering wheel with R Design seats. The leather is super soft and plush. And I think the car looks pretty darn good. Sweet, let's take it for a drive and uh, I'll give you guys some driving impressions on this. Right off the bat, this car is feeling a little bit dated as it's not quite updated with Volvo's new infotainment and interior design like the, like the S90, the V90, the XC90, the XC60. Those are all brand new cars, and this is still kind of old school Volvo, but it has the newer engine and transmission. So um, I think it's still relevant, it's still good, but just know that this does start to feel just a little bit dated right now, but it's still very good, and there's a lot of reasons why I like it. First of all, it's fast, it's really quick. Um, this turbocharged, supercharged engine, although it doesn't really sound like a whole lot, in practice, I really do like it. It's a nice engine. It's got tons of torque. It really pulls throughout the rev range. And the transmission works pretty well too. It's not super sharp and super responsive, but it gives you power when you want it, and it doesn't have a lot of lag to it. You've got this red gauge mode going on here in the dash display. You can customize a few things, but ultimately that's what you get. This infotainment system is all right. It takes a little bit to get used to. Um, things like traction control are pretty well hidden in there. And um, it makes sense once you get familiar with it, but right off the bat, it's kind of difficult to understand. Brakes are nice through that because he couldn't stop and you can kind of hear turn off stop start that's just annoying you can kind of hear at lower rpms you've got just a little bit of supercharger whine when you're in light throttle and then once you get into boost around 2500 rpm you start to hear this turbo whistle that's just super satisfying you do have some paddle shifters behind the steering wheel honestly i haven't used them i haven't felt the need to use them car is properly quick on its own. Some of the reasons why I like this car are a little bit tough to explain on video. Um, it's kind of one of those things where, one, I've always loved Volvos, but two, ergonomically this car just works really well. It's very easy and comfortable to drive. I just like, I can, I like getting into it, driving it, it's very just, it's quick, 
It's responsive, it's fun to drive, you have good visibility, it's solid, NVH is nice. I love this steering wheel. Uh, the R design shape is just, it's a cool shape that feels good to hand and the leather is really high quality. I just, there's a lot that I like about this car and the seats are fantastic. Volvo seats are just, they're always good. These are exceptional and uh, they look pretty cool too. But it's just a very usable, nice performance sedan. This this particular car comes in around $52,000. It flies under the radar. You know, I think this feels almost as fast as, you know, any of the performance offerings from the Germans, but it's just different. And Volvo's always kind of done that well. The handling isn't particularly inspiring, uh, but it does the job and it has just a pretty high level of performance overall. I love the power band. There's torque and power everywhere. I haven't been getting the best fuel economy, about 23, 24. Um, I'm sure if you had a longer trip on the highway, you could do pretty well. It says it's rated for 32 highway and 22 city. And it being an eight speed, it is gonna hunt through gears just a little bit, but it does put the power down. It's not like you're putting your foot down to the floor and it's taking forever to downshift. It's putting power down and giving you acceleration while it's downshifting, which is great. A lot of cars, you can just, you, you need to go, you need to get going, and it doesn't give you any power. This actually puts some power down between gears, which is nice. But that's kind of the thing about this car is one of the main reasons why I like it is it's just kind of a little bit greater than the sum of its parts. There's something about it the way it feels, the way it looks, the size, it's all just right. I just like the way it drives. It definitely is a wolf in sheep's clothing though. I don't think a lot of people expect this Volvo wagon to really hustle and a lot of cars would be hard pressed to keep up with this on the road. Probably one of my favorite things about this car is just kind of the way the interior looks. Uh, it's a little bit of a minimalist design. This is kind of a mess here, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Uh, I appreciate that all the buttons are filled. There aren't any empty buttons. That's always pretty annoying. Over here, there's one empty button next to, just right above the rear fog lights, but it does a pretty good job. Again, can't wait for the update on this car. I think. The new XC60 that I drove the other day it was the T8, the hybrid all-wheel drive, turbocharged, super, supercharged car. That was fantastic. The chassis was just super lively. It was incredibly fun to drive. Um, and I can't wait for the wagon and sedan offerings that Volvo's gonna bring in with the S60 and the V60. I think those are just gonna be fantastic cars. But until then, this is pretty darn good. I've really, I really have enjoyed driving this this week trying to think what else I need to cover. I mean, engine and transmission are fine. They're not the best, but it's Volvo. Um, this isn't an Audi S4, and um, that's okay. It's a little bit cramped in the back. If you're going to have kids um, with long legs, it might be a little bit of an issue. There isn't a ton of space back there. So many other cars in this segment have more seat more rear leg room. Storage capacity is great with the wagon, however, you get just a ton of space to put stuff and haul things. That's really nice. Yeah, I mean, that about sums it up. It's just, um, it's just a fun car to, to live with. I, uh, I would love to daily drive one of these. I think 
it's just a little bit of a you know you, you can you can harp on about how much you miss the turbocharged five cylinders but this isn't a bad engine it um, you just hear a bunch of boost and a little bit of supercharger whine and it hauls it really really gets up and goes and this is definitely one of the better automatic transmissions I've driven from Volvo they've done a pretty good job with the tuning on this I think where it falls short is the infotainment but um, I'm sure that'll be addressed here in kind of the next generation of cars. So comfortable, fast, ergonomic, quiet, practical. It kind of checks all those boxes. And uh, I think it looks pretty good too. It, it's classy, it's state, it's understated, it's stately. It's a nice car. <clears throat> It'd probably be a pretty good bargain picking one of these up in a few years after prices go down. Maybe it's just my imagination, but it seems like it rides a little bit lower. Can't remember if the Polestars have lower suspension or not, but you do get this uh, sport front bumper and then you get the rear diffuser as well as the unique 19 inch wheels. Yeah, it's a good looking package. All right, guys. Well, those are kind of my first impressions. I may do another video on this for this channel, but most likely it'll just be a POV test drive and night drive for Winding Road. And uh, until then, looking forward to driving the refreshed versions of these. Already, this is a great car, but there are a few places where it just needs an update, as it has been has been around for just a, quite a while. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.